Hi, everyone. I had a whole bunch of questions, uh, people private messaging me uh, on Discord and Twitter and, and YouTube about how I get my cell shaded look on my characters. So the way I do that is with a plugin in 3D Studio Max called PSOF Pencil. So this is what I use. You can go to psoft.co.jp. They actually have a demo version of it that you can use. So I suggest to download that and try it out for a bit. Um, now, the problem with PSoft is that the tutorials are not very good from their website. So that's why I'm doing this handy little tutorial session here for you. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a sphere here. And we're just going to render it really quick. Shift and Q to do quick renders. So there we go. Uh, you'll notice the sphere is shaded nicely, all that kind of stuff. It's just shaded with the basic uh, material settings uh, and Arnold. So what we need to do first is install the, pl the PSOF plugin, Pencil Plus 4, uh, into 3D Studio Max. Once you have that set up, you'll go to Rendering, you'll go to Render Setup, and we have to change the render setup instead from Arnold to Scanline. The reason why that is is because PSoft is not built for Arnold. It is built for the regular scan line renderer. Ignore the pencil plus line renderer. That's just for lines only. What we want is the scan line renderer. Now that we've uh, switched it to scan line renderer, so let me open that back up so you can see it. Render setup, scan line renderer. Change your HDTV output to whatever you want it to be. So 1920 by 1080 and do a quick render again. We're in scan line mode now, which is perfectly fine. Now I want you to hit render, go to rendering and go to environment or hit eight on your keyboard as the hotkey, eight on your keyboard. You'll notice that we can just change the environment or the effects. Well, first thing we want to do is just change the background color a bit. Instead of black, I'm just going to make it like a dark blue color like that. And now I'm going to render again so you can see the ball and the way it looks here. The next step is we want to add a uh, cell shader and the ink. So there's two separate parts to the PSoft Plus software. There's the cell shading color and then the ink. The way we add the cell shading color is we push M on the keyboard to open up our material editor. Once our material editor is open, we have all our shaders and materials on the left hand side. We have pencil plus four material. If you double click it, you'll see it creates the material itself the basic material, which will be applied to your model, and things like gradients and offset and the line-related material functions. Double-click on material, whatever number it gives it, number 26 for me, and you'll see all the settings that you can change for your cell shading type. You'll notice that you'll have uh, regular zones. If you go to gradations, we have regular zones, and then we have all the other color types here. Let's just do a two-zone co <laughs> two color right here. So we have P2 zone. And you'll notice if you double click on this sphere here, make it a little bit bigger, it's already cell shaded and everything. So we click on our ball, right click on the material, and click assign material to selection. Now that we have that, we can do a quick render and look at that. We already have a cell shaded ball. Without a light in our scene, it just uh, chooses a default light setup. So you can just insert any type of standard light and it will work just fine. So I'll insert an Omni light. And I'm going to switch my viewport into high quality so I can see how that looks. So you'll see that. And you see as I move the light, you'll see the cell shader reflects that type of setup. The farther back I move the light, the more spread out it is. And then I'll just render something like this. There we go. So we have our ball, and we have the cell shader now attached to it. Now, if we changed it to a three zone, You'll see we have three layers of shading. And we can keep switching it to four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we can also create our own shading standards. So uh, to change the colors, so let's go two zone, for instance. To change the colors, you just have to double click on the zones. You see we're in two zone. And I can double click on any of these zones to adjust the colors. So let's say I want a nice yellow, maybe a little orangey there. I'll go with that. OK, but now I want to change the second color without having to click OK and then click through it. Just tap, left click on this once. And now we can either choose to change the color or use the uh, eyedropper here, pick up that yellow, and then just make it a little bit more orange. And you see, we have that nice two-zone cell shade. But let's say you want it to be a little bit of a gradient. Then all you need to do is left click and drag this arrow and you see it has a little remnant of the yellow, and now it's gonna create a gradient. You can just manipulate these arrows as much as you want 
to create the effect you're looking for. And now we have a little bit of a gradient shading right there. You can even uh, choose to do this with a little bit of a cell shade type of effect. So if I wanted to, um, I can go here and play around with these, play around with that, and I'm going to do this. And we can copy and we can paste and manipulate and change things up. So then now I'm going to use it so there's less shadows. If I keep moving this aside, you'll see there's less orangey shadows like that. We can also uh, go down here and we can change uh, the color types. So right now the color is just the basic full on 100% color opacity. So it's 100% yellow and 100% orange here. But if you go down to here, you can change the blending type. It's kind of like working in Photoshop or any 2D software. So if you have a texture that's on this ball, you want to switch these to multiply layers and have one as white and one as a gray. And that will allow you to have a texture underneath and have the cell shading effect on top of the actual texture itself. I'll create a couple more material uh, like uh, objects so you can see uh, what that looks like. So I've got a tube here. And we got a pyramid here. I will apply, whoops, sorry, pyramid. There you go. I will apply this material to all three and you can see how it looks with the cell shading on top of it. So now that the cell shade is here, the last step, I mean, this is the basic intro, so I'll probably do more tutorials on this a little bit later on. But if you want to add a highlight, we go up here, we can just add specular highlights by just increasing the specular level of our objects. And you'll notice the more I increase it, the brighter highlight is on here. Now, why would we want a cell shaded effect that has a soft highlight on it? Well, we can change that by manipulating the numbers here. So I can decrease the glossiness down to like, let's say 80, and you can also increase the sharpness. So playing around with these numbers, you can see that we're able to kind of manipulate it and increase the sharpness quite a bit until we get a cell shaded look that we're looking for. And you can see whatever direction the light is in, there you go. That's where the reflection or the uh, the specular will show up. You can also change this by left clicking and dragging on the two arrows. And in real time, you'll be able to see it in the material and on the actual objects itself. So I'm gonna go with anastropic filtering and you can see it actually squishes the light. And I'm gonna switch orientation and you can see we can actually rotate the effect and we can change things like the diffraction effect and the actual range itself and go into the plus or minuses. And we can apply map channels to normal map channels, anything like that. We can even include bump maps and reflection maps as well. So there's a lot you can get into in regards to cell shading. So that's how we just basically create the materials. But how do I get the actual ink effect? Well, I hit eight on the keyboard or I hit the environment box, right? So eight on the keyboard will bring up this environment and effects. We changed our background color in the environment section and that's perfect. But what we need to do now is go to the actual effects and then we need to add a pencil plus line effect and then click okay. Once you have your pencil, pencil plus line effect added, you can then go down to this new option menu called line sets and objects. So we can add a line set. So there's our set number one. And then we can add the objects that we want to have the cell shade effect on it. So I click on that, I open up my list and I grab my three objects and I add them. And now if I render, there you go. So your rendering might look slightly different than mine. That's because my brush settings are changed a little bit. I'm just gonna quickly change my types of brushes back to their default. There you go, and I'll do a quick render. There you go, and there's our cell shade look. Now, sometimes you may not want this line on the inside. Like for some of you, that might be an issue. So what you can do to change some of your line functions, like where the lines appear and don't appear, is you scroll down and you can see edge. When you get to the edge menu, this is how it renders uh, outlines on your 3D objects. And you can turn off or turn on whatever you'd like. So I can turn off everything except outline. And now you see there's actually no lines in the middle of the objects and I can just use that for texturing or anything like that. But now if I include object, oh, that wasn't an object. Oh, that was a smoothing groups, yes, yes. Down to smoothing groups, intersections, and now smoothing groups. Now you can see the lines come back. Now you might say these lines might be too thick. How do I change that? 
easy mode. So what you do is you go scroll back up. So we went through our pencil plus line parameters. We added the line set. We added our three objects. And now we can adjust the line size. Basically, pretty much the line size and set is all here. So absolute allows you to render at any size and the lines will always change depending on the size of the frames. Um, so if the character is close, the lines are thicker. If the character is far, the lines are thinner. Or you can stick to relative. I actually like keeping it on relative mode because I get lots of control over the line thicknesses and width whenever I want, close up or far away. So what you do is you scroll down here and you go to visible lines, brush, and you'll see the blend mode. You can see the amount. So you can actually have like semi-transparent lines, which is really nice. And then you can go down to color and then size. And finally, we can adjust the sizing like say, say 0 0.5. And now you can see these lines are nice and thin. Now, if these lines are thin, uh, great, fantastic. If that works for you, amazing. But don't forget, you can also change the brush settings. So I can go to brush settings here and I can change the brush presets to anything I want. So for instance, I can go with flowers. And now instead of rendering lines, it'll render tiny, tiny little flowers. It's very strange, but it just trust me, you probably want to keep this one on default. Now, where you do want to start changing things is, is not the brush editor. You want to start changing them in the stroke because this will allow you to do cool effects like dashed line. So with dashed lines, you'll see if I just go closer here, you get this cool cutout effect. Very neat. I love that effect. It's so good. So you have this like you can use it for like paper cutouts and stuff like that. Or if you want, you can go to pen lines and pen lines go thin and thick. So you get this nice, smooth look to your lines. And that's why it's better than Max uh, Ink. In, uh, sorry, 3D Studio Max's ink and paint default is because there's a lot of control over how the lines look, the thicknesses, everything like that. And you can add speculars and cell shading and you can set these layers to multiply to have a texture. And eventually you'll get some work that will come out looking like this. So I use Pencil Plus for every single character I do. Uh, like everything I make, I always use Pencil Plus. And you can see that these actually have textures on them. I'm gonna load up the material library and you can see uh, I have my uh, cell shade, my ink and paint shader here. You can see it's set to white and gray for the colors. So two tone colors, but white and gray. And they're both set to multiply, which allows me to have the texture underneath, right? And then allows me to do the shading with just this white and gray. And now if I do a quick render, you can see what this character looks like now in full detail with everything about them. I will do turnarounds of these characters eventually and show you how to build a full character using ink and paint shader. But for now, that's my little quick intro to uh, setting up um, Pencil Plus and being able to start using it for basic materials and ink. And if you're interested later on, I'll create more tutorials. Thank you very much and have a great day.